Welcome to the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, Show 40. In our last episode, we talked about scheduling your day to fit it all in. In today's episode, we're chatting with guest and lifestyle builder, Rick Hughes. Uh, first, before we jump in, a little bit of info and background on Rick. Uh, he realized that leading people based on the vision of someone else whom I had never actually met made me miserable. I craved freedom, the freedom to create my own vision and to lead people to a better life through that vision. To do that, I needed to start my own venture. That venture is beginning with Frontier South Knives. So good to bring Rick on the show. It was. We had a really good. We had a really good time with Rick on the show. Yeah, and I mean, Rick is. Uh, you know, I think oftentimes I say like, don't start a business around your passion. Um, but I think Rick's a great this example one of, of few, somebody uh, who <laughs> who has, and you know, he's, he's doing it well, and he makes these custom knives, which like he'll show some in the in the video if you guys are watching the video cast, but. Like they're sweet. Mm -hmm. I told him, I'm like, you make people that would never want a knife, want a like knife. want a knife, not only by seeing the knife, but with the story he tells of like how the knife's created and, and why certain things were used and, and all of that is such, such a cool business that he has. Yeah. Well, and you can tell he really, he really does love it and he has a passion for it, uh, which I think comes out in the products that he creates. He never puts out any knives that aren't, you know, aren't up to par. Yeah, when I think what was cool, and, and you can even hear it in the episode, is, you know, how he uses story and branding and a lot of that, you know, in his business. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are afraid to share their story or kind of be able to, you know, show the backgrounds of, like, how are your products made or, you know, how are you doing things? And, you know, he's got a great opportunity with a lot of the stuff he's doing to incorporate that in. Yeah, well, and he's doing it the right way. Even though he is very passionate about his business, he knows he needs to run it like a business. So that's a lot of what we chatted about in the episode, um, talking about, you know, how to set those 90 day yearly goals, how to break that down so that you know exactly what you should be working on week to week, and then how to keep yourself motivated because, you know, it is hard sometimes when you get that roller coaster of momentum back and forth between the things that you need to do. Yeah, well, that's, that's a lot of what people don't realize when they go to transition out of a job and into doing their own thing. So, and, and Rick actually has some really cool stuff he's doing, has already done to kind of get him started on that process. Yeah. All right. So we're really excited for you guys to dive into this episode. But first, one last thing. Are you team Wonder Woman or team Batman? All right, you guys, we are here with Rick, one of our lifestyle builders. And Rick, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your journey to becoming an entrepreneur and a lifestyle builder? Hi, awesome. Um, you know, I think that there's a, uh, a little bit of that craving for all of us that are entrepreneurs at one time that starts forever ago, but we kind of get stuck in the grind of nine to five. That's kind of what I did. Um, but it, it took a long time for me to realize that I was just not happy because I also think that um, it's the norm to kind of joke about not being happy in your nine to five job. Oh, I'm miserable going to work, but I got tired of it. You know what I mean? And uh, so I, um, when I lived in Alaska, I started talking with one of my mentors and I was like, hey man, I'm just not happy doing this anymore because I was in ministry at that time. And he uh, started prying me for different questions and things that I wanted to do. And uh, he encouraged me to go to business school. And, and I did, but in the process of doing that, I still kept a nine to five job, working IT management and, and still just not happy and fulfilled with all of that. And then um, about a year and a half ago, my grandpa almost died. Um, it came to a point where he had a heart attack. He's 74. And I didn't have an option to go see him. And I, I didn't think that I'd get to see him a last time before, before he was gone. Because I'm having to fight whether or not, you know, I take time off work. I'm not getting paid. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wonder if I'm going to get in trouble if I take too much time off. And then I lose my job when I come back. And that kind of stress was, uh, was terrifying for me to not be able to think about whether or not I could be with my grandpa or, or something like that. And, uh, and so I started thinking about it and how can I give myself that freedom for the first time in my life? And, uh, and I just started plugging towards trying to figure out what I can do to give myself some freedom, help myself, make myself, uh, be able to just do what I need to do if I need to do it and not be stuck to someone else's schedule. Besides, I, I spent a lot of years. Knives? <laughs> What's that? How did you go from IT to knives? You know, I've always loved and collected knives and swords. 
my whole life. <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, IT was just kind of something that I did because I fell into it, not because it was my passion. And uh, I always loved craftsmanship. And so I uh, started doing it as a hobby just for fun on the side. And I'm like, you know what? I can make a business out of this. And so that's the direction it went. Love that. I love that. And we got another IT guy over here. Oh, yeah. Obviously, he also figured out that IT was not his passion as well. <laughs> <laughs> so bring us to how did you dive into the knives and then kind of how did you go about building that business out? Like what, what did it look like when you finally decided, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to start creating custom knives to where you are now. It started with me just buying some cheap tools from Harbor Freight and some scrap steel from Home Depot and saying, hey, I want to make this thing sharp and see if I can stab stuff with it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and I started joining some Facebook groups and kind of doing some more research after it was just, hey, a fun weekend project. And it began to grow into something that I realized was a huge community. Um, there's a, a market that's constantly growing for local made products in general. And so people really like the idea of, of a, a handmade custom heirloom quality tool that maybe they can pass on to their kids. Yeah. And, uh, and so I thought, hey, maybe I could get into really learning the science behind what makes a good knife, what makes it high quality, and what sets, what sets apart the $1,000 knives you see someone walking around with, with, with the $25 one you could pick up at Walmart? What's the difference? Mm -hmm. And how can I maybe bridge that gap to make that really cool thing that may cost someone else $1,000 accessible to somebody else that may not have $1,000 to spend on a knife? Um, so I began researching the science and uh, the on the metallurgy behind, behind what makes different steels good for different knives, different applications and that sort of thing, different handle materials. And I got really entrenched into the details of it that I'm like, I'm kind of an expert, not really, but you know, <laughs> I was like, I could be. And so I, I just kept trying and I kept making more and kept making more. And um, my brother-in-law encouraged me that uh, I should start selling them. Mm. And I was like, yeah, and I could, I could do this. And uh, the dream that I had had about starting my own company, I was like, maybe this is going to be it. Maybe this should be what I'm going to try to start first. And I figured worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, Hey, I made some cool knives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so figured, do, you, uh, uh, do you have any examples of the knives? Like for people that are watching the video cast on YouTube? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. Cause I, like, I'd love to just, you know, see like, what's the difference, like you said, between the $25 knife and, you know, a custom made one. Yeah. And, um, so I've got, I've got this one here. I don't know how well you can see it, cool little guy. but, um, this is a, a skinning type knife and I designed it the way I did because, um, in the research that I've been doing, I'm seeing a lot of people, I like big knives. I've always been like, Hey, let's get the big honking thing that you can, you know, <laughs> chop a tree down out of your pocket. But um, what I was learning from a lot of people is they like smaller compact knives. And so I designed this one um, with, see, it's not very long. It's very small, but it's something for skinning that you can easily grab. And it's very smooth. And so the, the curvature in the handle I designed so that you can have extra leverage with your pinky. And so you're not, if you ever spent time chopping on a cutting board, you know, ugh, it gets exhausting. But if you're maybe dressing game out in the wild, that whole thing, you can get tiring. So, so I built it this way with a uh, Patagonian rosewood handles and uh, titanium pins. And I just think that those kind of, it's a, it's a great industry for buzzwords. Yes. Uh, make, <laughs> that that sounds sound really, really cool. Fancy. <laughs> but so there's that one. And I got this one. This is my first production line that oh, wow. I nice. mass produced sort of um, it's got a little bit of dye on the blade because it's been in the sheath for a while but um, this one's great for for like uh, uh, for like a fisherman that wants to fillet out on the river when he's there whip it out and just and just take care of it right there on the spot and the thing about my blades is um, that would make it harder though maybe for that is I, I haven't done anything with stainless steel when you go to Walmart and stuff, a lot of those knives, they, they make them all stainless steel, so they don't rust. Yeah. Um, 
but you sacrifice um, integrity of the steel. And so I do everything high carbon now. Eventually I'll move into stainless steel um, a little bit, but for now I just wanna, part of that is it lets me connect with the customer because I really want to teach people how to take care of a higher quality blade. Yeah, well, and so what part of that is- say, uh, What I was just gonna say is you were kind of, even just demonstrating those to us, um, people that are gonna spend a little bit more money and get the custom stuff, are usually more interested, not just in the product, but in the craftsmanship. How did it come about? Why is it that way? And I think you did a really good job of just kind of walking that through. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what this type of market needs. Yeah. All right, sweet. So with that, let's kind of shift into some of your questions and see how we can help you uh, out with your business. All right, so your first question, you wanted to know, how do you transition from the structure of a nine to five job to creating your own time management schedule and learning how to be productive on your own? This is a great, great question because I know you are not alone in this struggle. <laughs> a lot of people have this problem when they leave their job and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm free, I can do whatever I want. And then you're like, oh exactly. crap, I have to actually get work done. <laughs> Every day is a weekend. <laughs> yes. Like no one cares about Mondays anymore because when you're an entrepreneur, every day is your own day. So yeah. how do you make sure that you're getting the things done that you need to get done? You're using your time in a smart way and you're actually producing what you need to get done in your business. So let me ask a quick question first. So what do you think is going to be the biggest struggle or challenge that you'll face as you make this transition? For me, the struggle was not really knowing what to do every day. You know, in a nine to five job, you know your tasks, you're mm -hmm. given them. They're laid out by someone that has business strategy on point and they've set up a production facility or, or whatever it is that you do at your work. And, and you know what you're supposed to do every single day and you know that you get in trouble if you don't do it every single day <laughs> at home. I mean, my, my, my wife might yell at me if I'm sitting on the couch eating cereal at five o'clock when she comes home. But like, um, how do I really build concrete structure for myself to work every single day? So I'm not kind of twiddling my thumb. Well, what do I do now? Or maybe I'm bored today, so I'm not going to do it, you know, mm. or I want to play video games or I want to go to a movie and stay. I have that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so you hit on a key word there, which was business strategy. And depending on, you know, what uh, kind of backgrounds people had, some people might be a little more into that or understanding what that is. You know, you went back to school for some business stuff, right? So you probably have a little bit of that understanding. But um, what a lot of people miss out on is they don't realize that it all starts with understanding the strategy and where you want to go and then really working that backwards to then help you figure out what you need to do today. So um, the biggest thing that we use and that we also then coach people on is basically goal setting. So, you know, just very quickly, it starts with understanding first, you know, in your life, what do you want your life to look like? So, for example, this year, we actually said, you know what, we don't want to work on Friday afternoons. So we kind of got clear on what we wanted our lives to look like. And then we scheduled our business stuff within that. So we then set out our business goals. And this is what you can do as well, is you can say, you know, for example, um, you know, by the end of the year, so when it comes to December 31st, 2018, what do I want my life and my business to look like? And you can start that out with how much money you want the business to be making. And then even, you know, uh, how much time are you spending? Just in general, kind of get that vision. And then you can work backwards. And a big thing that we recommend people do is to break their goals up into 90 day chunks. Mm -hmm. And by setting, let's say, um, you know, three is a good number. You can really go three to five, depending on how big the goals are. But by setting a couple of goals to focus on for the next 90 days, then what you can do is ultimately break those down and say, okay, what are the actions that I've got to do today and this week that will then drive me towards those goals in 90 days? And by doing that, at least from a planning process, then it kind of gives you some structure on where are you going and what are the, some of the key things you got to do in order to get there. Yeah, and another thing that I like to have people look at is um, a lot of us don't understand what our own working styles are. So, for instance, Tom is a morning person. He likes to get up, 
start doing his stuff. Like I'm going to make my, my green smoothie. I'm going to work out. I'm going to take a shower and then I'm going to be ready to go. And I'm going to be super productive because I am a morning person. And I did all those things today. (laughs) He did all those (laughs) things today. I, on the other hand, am a little bit of a slow start in the mornings. I really need that time to be like fully awake, fully aware to be ready to start the day. Like I can't rush into things because otherwise I, I completely will just like, I push against what I need to do. If I give myself the time to wake up in a natural way, to do things the way that I like to do them, then I can say, okay, now I've done all my stuff. I'm ready to jump into work. Let me look at the list of things that I was planning on doing today and see which of those I want to tackle first. Um, For me, sometimes that means tackling the thing that I don't want to do right in the morning, getting it over with. Uh, Sometimes it could be something that I know is going to take a little bit longer. So I want to give myself that time in the morning to get that task done and then say, okay, at a certain time, I'm going to stop for lunch. And then after lunch, I'm going to work on all the little stuff that I have to get done until it gets to the end of the day. Uh, occasionally I might have some free time at night if Tom and all the kids are in bed by eight o'clock. So (laughs) sometimes I might do like more of my less focused, more fun stuff. I might sit on the couch and just kind of like maybe do social media scheduling or do like some creative type work um, when I'm at at night and I, I have less focus. So I know my work style so that when I go to tackle my days and put my time management schedule together, I do it in a way that fits me best. And Tom does it in a way that fits him best. He loves time blocking. He loves being very strict with, I'm working, don't distract me, don't talk to me, nobody bother me, I'm turning all of my notifications off. Um, I need to get this focus stuff done. And you know, so we've figured out our own work styles so that when we go to tackle that task list and say, okay, well my goal is I wanna hit this amount of revenue by 90 days from now, break that down into all these tasks that I need to do in order to hit that goal. Each day you're doing those tasks that you've predetermined are going to help you get closer to that goal. Yeah. And um, so the common theme with this is really around clarity and it's clarity on what you're trying to achieve and then clarity on how you work best and what things you're going to do that will get you there. So like, one of the the main routines that we use is we do a daily huddle or a daily sync up. We call it sync up and trink up. And basically what this is, is it's a a quick way to start our day out. So it's 15 minutes in the morning and we go through and we look at our calendars and say, okay, what meetings and what things do we have scheduled for today? We say essentially, what's the goal for today? What Mm -hmm. are the, what's the main thing I want to get done? And what are the couple actions I got to take to get that done? And then, um, you know, is there anything that I need help with or, you know, that's kind of getting in my way that is going to stop me from having that success? And by doing that every single day, it lets us kind of refocus. And then instead of like what a lot of people do, they'll sit down and do work and they're like, oh, what am I doing today? Well, let me go look here. And then I get distracted by a social media notification. And then eventually I'm watching like cat videos on YouTube and two hours have gone by. <laughs> so, yeah. The key thing is really if you can do at least that daily routine of sitting down, figuring out what your goal is, um, then it makes it a lot easier to help you focus that day. Mm-hmm. So what, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think, um, you know, have you done any of this like bigger picture kind of business strategy or planning yet? Or is that something that's going to be like newer to you? I've, uh, you know, I've done some of it. I've walked through uh, the the lifestyle builders set up that you guys have, um, the, uh, the math that you guys give for kind of setting up for goal setting and, mm-hmm. uh, the weekly, monthly and quarterly reviews to check back and make sure you're actually making progress. Um, and it's, it honestly, for me, it's, it's a little bit daunting because it's kind of uncharted territory. Mm. And so I, I have spurts where I get super interested in it and I put all my effort into it and I get it set up and I get it ready and I get it planned and and I do it for a couple of days and then I just begin to forget because I get off track and I get focused on doing different work and and things. So, so my biggest struggle is keeping it all in line. Mm -hmm. And I think I take on too much. um, If I'm honest and kind of candid, I think I take on too much at one time um, when it comes to that strategizing that I'm, I'm just, not used to all the new things I'm trying to do 
And so I, it begins to fade off a little yeah. bit and I do it. I jump back in a spurt for a week and then I'm off for a week. And, and so um, <laughs> it's just really difficult for me to stay consistent with it yeah. as I'm, as I'm kind of developing and growing in that area. So, so why do you think it's difficult to stay consistent? It's a good question <laughs> that I haven't really thought too hard about yet. <laughs> You're good at those prying questions, Tom. Yeah, that's, that's um, what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if the you don't coaching you. yeah if you don't necessarily know the answer right now um that'd be something to think about because as ariana was talking like both of our styles are very different and for a long time what until we, tried, we figured that out <laughs> yeah and, and for a long time what we tried to do was to do the same thing but what we've done now is we basically figured out how do we each kind of optimize what we're doing and it's in a different way but we're still focused on getting that result um so if you can start thinking about like what is it like if you have a day where you're really just focused and things are going well and kind of figuring out what, what was it that day that got me in the zone versus another day where like you kind of fell off or, you know, you weren't really as motivated. If you can start to, you know, understand what the underlying pieces are, then what you can do is say, well, how do I structure more days this way? And then when this thing comes up, you know, what can I start doing? How do I start retraining myself so that I can make more of the successful days? Um, and your point about like kind of having too much on our plates, like we all do it. Yep. And we still the, do it sometimes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everyone does. <laughs> and, and one of the biggest things there is really to simplify, like what we really want to be doing. I mean, for some people, what we actually say is pick one goal to get done in the next 90 days and just focus on that one goal and then figure out what are the, what are the key activities that need to be done and shut everything else out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, like we'll have to talk about this a lot of times. We'll, we'll go back and kind of do a time audit and we're like, why are we doing all these things? Cause they're not directly contributing to that goal we said was important. So then we got to really strip those away and say, all right, these are the three key actions we're going to take. And we're just going to keep taking those cause those are going to get us to our goal. Yeah. And I, I am someone who struggled with consistency for a long time. Um, and what I have found helpful for me I am a visual person and also a, um, what's the word I was looking for? Text, texture? No, no, I don't know what it is. I got nothing. (laughs) I need, sometimes I need that act of like (laughs) physically doing something. So, um, if you are a visual person, a lot of times having those things that you need to do in front of you, like in a list, like here's the three main things I need to get done today. And then here's my little, like, if I get those done, the extra stuff that I'm going to throw on, having an actual list to look at can be really helpful when you get lost or you get demotivated and you're like, ah, nothing's going right. Okay, let's go back and look at my list. If that one task is causing me issues, let me put that on hold and let me jump to the next task so that I'm not spending my whole morning sitting around trying to get that one thing done that I'm obviously having struggles with. Let me put that on hold and let me jump to the next thing and at least get a couple of my tasks done. And then I really like to have like the little checkbox or like when you get to cross something off that's done. For me, it's all about like the, I did something. I, I was productive today because I got these three things done. Regardless if my list had eight things on it, at least I got those three things done. Um, Whereas a lot of times if you're just kind of thinking of those, oh yeah, I was supposed to do this and I was supposed to do this, you don't ever really train your brain to have that little celebration after you've gotten something done. And then that celebration motivates you to get the next thing done and the next thing done. And you'll notice when you have one productive day, a lot of times you tend to have a couple productive days in a row because you've given yourself that, that yay, I got stuff done and I'm going to be so productive again today. And you keep that momentum going because you're constantly doing tasks that you know are helping you reach your goals. And obviously having those weekly sync up meetings can help too, because you're looking back and it's like, oh my gosh, look Mm -hmm. at all this stuff that I just got done this week. And as people start to engage with you, as you start to have customers coming in, like it's all just validation for your brain that you're on the right path and you're doing the right things, which then leads to more momentum and more productive days while you're working on things. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And Tom, back to your point about, um, you know, finding a day that, that you're, you know, you're really productive and you feel great and you do all that. What, 
what, uh, what kind of things did I do maybe that day that helped led up to that productivity or that boost of energy. And, uh, so I've discovered that, um, fortunately, which was not something I ever had to do at nine to five because you do the same routine going to work every day. But now for me on my own, um, uh, to kind of combine what you both said, Ariana, I, I, um, have an accountability chart that I keep right here, um, Yay. that I check off <laughs> the six things that I want to make sure I do every single day. And they're not business related. Mm. They're, they're personal development for me. And because I've realized that if I'm not feeling great, if I'm not energized, if I didn't sleep well, if I didn't get breakfast or something, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of dead the rest of the day, or at least my energy and my product productivity is diminished. So between that and an app that I recently found called time tune, um, I've started, uh, making sure that I have a routine that it's helping me build every single day to maximize the start of productivity. And so that's where I'm building it right now. I haven't got to the point where I'm building the routine for my business yet because I've recognized the deficiency in my, in my personal development that I needed to work on um, yeah, to really saying, feel like I'm. And I just want to give you a lot of credit because a lot of people skip that stuff, mm. you know, success in business really comes first from, you know, success in life and understanding as a person, who you need to be, what kind of mindset you got to have, and then how you take care of yourself. I mean, so like for my morning routine, like yeah. you said, um, sleeping at night, getting enough sleep. Um, I find that when I'm eating healthy and moving and learning every day, I'm so much more productive, so much focused. But I can tell when I start like not eating as well and when I skip the gym a couple days, like I just feel like groggy and everything mm -hmm. else then tumbles from that. Mm -hmm. So you're definitely on the right path of, you know, identifying that because that's going to make everything else so much easier. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, any, any other questions we want to go through today? Uh-oh. Sorry. The connection know, broke out. up a little bit. I didn't hear what we you said. We cut out a bit there. Um, all right. So you had another question around leads, which was what to do once you've got them. It's a great question. Yeah. Too. <laughs> We got two great questions today. So when you're saying once you get people, when you're saying leads, are they um, people jumping on your email list? Is it people finding you on Facebook or, or coming to your website? Do you know how people are finding you or you're finding them? Sorry, again, you guys, oh, no. uh, it's cutting out pretty bad. It's happening. All right. So when you say uh, what to do once you've got leads, is it, are you going out and finding the leads? Are they finding you? Do you know where they're coming from? Yeah, I know where they're coming from. And it's uh, it's a little bit of both. It's me talking to people, word of mouth, um, different marketing that I've been trying out um, and people uh, coming to me like from a Facebook post or, or an Instagram post saying, Hey, I'd love to buy this knife that you're making. Um, or, if they just kind of suggest how really what my question is, is how do I follow up with that lead and, and not be um, intrusive or spammy and that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm not a salesperson. I never have been. It's not my forte. Um, I'm trying to learn to be, but it's not what I'm good at. And so I, I just, I'm hesitant um, because I hate when people, you know, cold email me or cold message me on Facebook and they have something that they're pitching. Tom, you did a great job at this um, because when you and I first started talking, there was no sales, no anything, nothing like that. You were, you were just trying to help me. And that was, um, and there was like no expectation and never, never has been an expectation for me to like, you know, buy something from you. And, uh, and so it was just that kind of interaction was something that I want to be able to recreate, but I'm not, uh, the thing about my market is there's a lot of flaky people and I'm sure there's that way with, with every market, but, um, you get some, some country guy that thinks, Hey, that's a really cool knife and they have no intention of ever buying it, but they love to look. Um, yeah. that's what, you know, people that like knives do. They like to look at them. And so, um, I just don't know how to appropriately follow up and not be intrusive. Um, and not, and, be spammy and all that 
Maybe I'm overthinking it too. I'm, gonna, I'm hopping in before you. I was going to say, you, you better because I'm about to go. <laughs> so one of the things here um, that we often like to talk about and, and do ourselves is when you get people coming to you, if you can segment them into buckets. So you obviously know, you, you just said, you've got some people who just like to look. If you mm -hmm. can segment those people and then you've got some people who are interested in buying and you can segment those people and then you might have people who are previous customers and are coming back or whatever those those different types of people coming to you are if you can start to segment them in different themed buckets then you have a opportunity to move them along into their customer journey so for the people who just like to look as you said they probably won't become customers that's okay what you can do with them, they're gonna have their own journey with your company. And maybe because they're not interested in buying, that involves jumping into the fact that they're interested in knives and they just love knives. So you're sharing um, some different content to them and you're asking them to share it with their friends to make more people aware of this cool product that they found. Okay. Maybe they aren't interested in buying, but they can actually become a part of your business by sharing that out with other people that they know love knives and maybe those people come in and they're in the buying segment now people that come in in the buying segment they've got their own journey that they're going to walk through they don't maybe they don't know what type of knife they want to buy maybe they don't know what they want to use the knives for um, maybe they have all sorts of things that they do and they can't decide which knife is the right knife for them so you would want to create content or speak to them in a manner that moves them along that journey to help them figure out okay I think I'm gonna grab a fishing knife because I love fishing and I it would be great to have that that little knife in my pocket to just pull out while I'm out there uh, maybe they're outdoorsy and they want one of the bigger knives so they can chop down a tree if they decide to you know but it's helping those people figure out where they stand and move them along their journey to taking them from an interested customer to a buying customer and so any other any other kinds of segments you have coming in it's about looking at who they are what their what their struggles are what they're looking for from you and your knives and how you can kind of move them along to what they need based on how how they came to you gotcha yep so so you talked about like when we first chatted um, you had a really good experience and you didn't feel like it was like spammy or salesy and then ultimately you joined lifestyle builders um, so either that experience or another um, really good sales experience that you had what do you think it was that caused you to not feel spammy or not feel like you were getting sold and then ultimately you had a really good experience like what were some of the characteristics that stood out to you um, in those cases in those you know I was I was my need at that time was I was looking for community, leadership, mentorship, coaching type things. You provided that uh, in, a, in a small capacity at no charge. And being a broke entrepreneur wannabe, <laughs> that's what I needed. And so, um, and so it was just, it, it was exactly what I was needing. It, what you provided, and I think, you know, maybe... Um, indirectly was exactly what I really needed to help begin working towards my goal, which was the reason that we were in some of the other same Facebook groups together in the first place. Um, and so, but it was, it was, it was genuine um, interaction, I think was the, was the key thing for me because I feel like I can smell someone that's fake a mile away mm -hmm. and it really, really puts me off. You know what I mean? I, I, and, and it's almost like if I kind of sense your fake, even if your product is great, I just don't want to deal with you. Like I don't, I'm just, there's a bad taste in my mouth and I'm going to go the other way. Um, but it was that, that, uh, that genuine desire that I felt to help somebody else. Um, and, and that's what I've been trying to establish um, in a lot of the other knife making and hunting groups and fishing groups and kitchen groups. Um, that I'm part of in communities is I'm trying to talk to people about knives and, and kind of put myself out there as, as a quote unquote expert or someone knowledgeable at the very least um, just to help people because I could do this for free. Honestly, I love doing it. I love helping people, but um, that's, that's really what stood out to me from the very beginning. 
Yeah. So um, there's a really good book I'd recommend you read. Uh, of course there is. Called <laughs> <laughs> to Sell as Human. And, you know, you, you made a lot of great points there. So our, our like BS or our scam meters are all up so high now because there's so much of it out there. And oftentimes we get this kind of, um, you know, shaded perception of sales because we get like that used car salesman. Mm-hmm. And um, what the author of this book talks about is really like we sell every day. You know, you don't have to have a sales job to sell. Um, I mean, our kids are great examples of that. <laughs> like, they're constantly negotiating and selling us on things. And if you look at it, like, you know, if you've got a job or, you know, I'm trying to sell Ariana on stuff all the time. Yep. So a lot of what that book will do is help reframe and give some really good strategies. But um, as Ariana was talking about with that customer journey, what we end up doing is we start with the end in mind. So we say, at the end of the day, what's the outcome or the feeling that I want somebody that's a customer to experience? And, you know, you want them to be really happy with the product. You want them to, you know, um, have the result they're looking for and you want them to tell their friends. So then you start working backwards and you say, okay, so once they're a customer, what do I got to do to make sure that they have that experience and they're out telling their friends and they're happy? And then you start putting that in place. And then you say, okay, so then how do I have them become a customer? And what is it that they ultimately need at the time when they're going to be willing to buy that I need to be giving to them? And then you look back and you say, okay, and you keep going backwards like this. And then what that allows you to do is, Ariana was saying, it allows you to map that customer journey. And it takes some time and it takes talking to, you know, a handful of people. But once you really figure that out, what you can then say, just like you said, is, you know, we met you at the right place you were at. And oftentimes when people are, are like slimy or whatever else, they're not meeting you at that place. And sometimes they might just be slimy. Mm-hmm. Um, but if at the very beginning you can say, all right, what is, um, let's say, for example, somebody's not aware of the fact that they want a custom knife um, or they're not aware of your company. How do they first become aware of the fact that they want this and of your company? And then what's the next step they take and the next step they take? And as you really kind of map that out, then you can start to really identify, all right, this person really doesn't even know they want a knife or they don't know the difference between a $25 knife and a $100 knife. So now maybe you create a piece of content. Uh, It could be a brochure. It could be a blog post. And you educate people. Here's the differences and here's the type of person that would really benefit from this knife. As somebody reads that, they might say, Oh, you know what? I would, you know, I just had a child and this would be such a good thing to have me give this knife and then give it to them later on. Right. So because you met them where they're at and you educated them, now they're thinking about, okay, well, maybe I do want a knife. Let me go do some research. And then the next thing you provide them is answers to the questions they have on research to then move them to become a customer. Gotcha. Right. So, and as you said, the perspective that we always take is, how do I serve those people? Yeah. And because you have a passion for this, it actually makes serving easier because like you said, you love doing this anyways. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of what we like. I mean, we love helping people to start their businesses and grow their businesses. And so it becomes a passion for us. And we just always ask, how can we help more people? Yep. And I think the other part of it too is how can you, how can you be constantly striving to better understand your potential customers mm-hmm. and your audience? So a lot of the interactions that Tom would have with people in Facebook groups, he always goes towards asking questions. So when people would post up and ask a question, instead of just jumping in and automatically like posting a 500 word comment that oh, I know all of these things, I'm going to help you and tell you all of them. A lot mm-hmm. of times he'll go in and just post a simple question. Well, I don't know which kind of knife to buy. Well, what are you looking to what are you looking to do with the knife? You know, what kind of results are you wanting? So then you're opening it up and you're you're serving them by trying to better understand their needs and they're seeing you as, hey, this guy actually wants to help me. Like he's asking questions. And then when they answer those questions, you can go in and say, Oh, well, you might want to think about this because you know, you mentioned wanting to have this option and then you you could also look at this over here because you mentioned that option. So you're not forcibly trying to shove anything down their throat, you're saying, let me better understand your needs. And then let me give you some options because, you know, that's always helpful. People don't want to be told that they have to do something. They want to be, okay, well, I have these options. Let me weigh my choices here and I'm going to make one. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're, I mean, and people can see that you talked about it. People can, they have a bullshit meter. (laughs) They know when someone is honestly, truly trying to help them versus this person's just in it to get my sale. And because you are so passionate about what you do and trying to help people by building these, that's going to come through in your interactions. So I don't, I don't think you ever have to be worried about coming off as like, oh, I'm only in it for the money because you know you're not in it for the money. You're in it for the bigger picture. You're in it for helping your customers. You're in it for creating better products for them. Yeah. So it's just, it's reframing that in your head and looking at, oh, I, this person actually wants to know about my knives. Now I can offer them that without feeling like I'm trying to sell them. They asked me for information and I'm giving it to them. Be, gotcha. You know, a lot, a lot of that, I had those issues as well with when it came to selling, like, oh, I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to sell them something all the time. And it was, okay, do I truly understand who our ideal customers are? Do I truly understand their needs, their struggles? And then do I know how what we have can help them? And then if that's the case, then I'm never being slimy or, you know, underhanded salesy by telling them, hey, we have a solution that can help you and we honestly want you to succeed. You know, they can they can take it at face value and, and do with it what they will, but you're putting it out there. I have a solution for you. If you want some more answers or some more help with it, I can help you with that. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah, and I just got to say, so... <laughs> If anyone heard Ariana in the past or anything (laughs) else, um, she's actually been working with a sales coach and that's a lot of, I mean, like you can tell the difference right now on your perception of sales and understanding that. And, you know, far too often what we find with entrepreneurs that are struggling is that they do have some of this mindset stuff around selling and sales. Um, But once you make that shift and you really understand, hey, I have something valuable and I can help people. Um, and the reframe I always try to tell people is like, look, if you truly believe in your product or solution and you're clear on who you can help, selling to them is actually the least selfish thing you can do because you're helping them solve a problem. What, you know, is what most of us do is we, we feel like we don't want to sell them, but what you're really doing is not helping them solve that problem they have. Now, in your situation, it's probably less of a problem they have and more of something they're seeking, more of something that they want more of. And you being able to help that, I mean, like, especially with, you know, the story and being able to hand that down, like that goes well beyond just a knife. Like every knife has a story, Mm -hmm. right? And every knife has a history. And like, I think like, as I'm looking at this, I think videos would do really well for you, like YouTube videos and you explaining the knife and telling the history of it. And in that, like, I, I think that could do so well. Yeah, and I watched some of them. You had some live videos and stuff that you were doing when you were creating knives. And for me, that was really cool. Yeah. Because I've never seen someone make a knife before. And, I mean, mm-hmm. that comes back to some of those people who just like to look. If they just like to look and they're watching those videos of how the knives are being produced, like, that, that sort huge. of stuff is what gets you in in – you're stuck with that company. Like you can't get out of your head and you just mm-hmm. really plug with people's emotions and things. And, and they become, instead of just looking, they're like, wow, he just made that knife. And I, I really connected with it. And I want that knife right there. And then you've now you've moved somebody from their journey of, I'm just a looker to, I want to buy a knife. Yeah. And that's great. I have a, one of the first knives that I sold is a guy that does um, videography and photography for the local newspaper here. And he's also an avid hiker camper. And so that's why he bought one of my knives. So he was stoked about the idea of getting to come to my house and, and in my shop and, and do some of that for me. Yeah. And that'd be get awesome. some footage. So that's, that's in the, in the works. We're working on it. Yay. Um, um, sweet. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. And then um, what I think would be huge too, if you got somebody like him, um, see if you can get a video testimonial of him, mm-hmm. right? Like, so have him show the knife and, and talk about that because now you can really piece together the whole story. Like yep. you can actually show the knife being produced. You can be talking about it. Now you've got the customer with the end result. And Even better if he did like that. a selfie video out in the woods while he's using it. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all of that stuff would be really well. And I think really get the message across that this isn't just a knife. This is a lot more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, sweet. All right, we've been talking so, about these knives. Where can people find you if they want to find out more about you or about your knives? Well, my company's name is Frontier South Knives. So Instagram, Facebook, 
and the website all have the same name at Frontier South Knives, FrontierSouthKnives.com. And the website's not totally finished, but the homepage is all done, and you can take a look at a whole bunch of stuff that I've worked on. And so, um, and same with the email. If there's any email you guys want to shoot me an email and talk about any knives, Rick at FrontierSouthKnives.com. That's same name all across the board. Love it. See, it makes it easy to find. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. So, so before we let you go, um, obviously a lot of good information, a lot of good questions on this call. Um, what's the one action you're going to take coming out of this call to move your business forward? The first action I'm going to take is um, to uh, begin compiling um, my goals to give myself a clear roadmap of exactly where I want to be by the end of the week, end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year, so that I have something more definitive than what I have now to be working towards. I Sweet. love it. Love it. Perfect. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone. It's been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And we want to say a special thank you to our lifestyle builder, Rick, for coming on and being a guest on the show today and sharing all of the struggles and all the things in his business. So thank you, Rick, for joining us. My pleasure. As always. As always, it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Are you frustrated by a lack of momentum in your business? Do you want real-time guidance and support from seasoned entrepreneurs who really care about your results? If you're nodding your head or awkwardly shouting yes in public somewhere, then we invite you to join Lifestyle Builders, a mentorship program designed to meet you where you are and give you strategic and custom guidance so you can build the business you need for the life you crave. You can find out more at joinlifestylebuilders.com. Your life, your business, your way. Be joined. Family entrepreneur life. Be joined. Family entrepreneur.